Hi guys, Togo here with a new video. And this video will be a discussion video, a state of PvP video for Dragonflight. Um, I'm currently really worried about Dragonflight, but I want to discuss why and also give you some statistics because I feel like some people do not understand where I'm coming from whenever I'm actually talking about um, like Dragonflight in general. But also, I feel like uh i also need to explain about the future of the channel uh in the second part because i made some posts and i want to clarify a few things so if you want to stick with me at the end of the like video of state of pvp i will discuss about that too so the state of pvp currently in dragonfight is in a horrid state what am i actually saying by that in 2v2 the bracket is kind of dead in 3v3 it is kind of dead especially at higher mmr because the mmr is currently um i would say frozen at higher level of games so once you have reached a certain mmr threshold you do win quite frankly no mmr or cr so it means that you can only lose things so if you win, you will maybe get like a few points or even no points, especially in Soul Shuffle. But if you lose, you will lose a lot of points because it punishes you towards the lower ends because, because Soul Shuffle and 3v3 brackets are actually like MMR capped. While, for example, in Season 1, the MMR cap was at 3400, something like that. So it was very hard to get to the 3500. But right now it is capped like around 2200 2300 like that's the maximum and some people really struggle to go higher because again if you want to go higher you need to go 60 and even if it's 5 1 it's going to be zero cr gained and if it's 4, four 2 you even might lose cr so that's the problem a lot of like uh, high-end pvpers are actually talking about that again it's not even like applicable to everyone because not everyone is high end i'm not even high end because i again have some issues with queue times but that's another issue uh, that i want to discuss a bit further down in the video but currently the mmr cap is actually killing the brackets as a whole which means also that people are going to re-roll to go to the lower brackets to be able to play the game and get rewarded so you will face pros you will face rank ones you will face people that are much better than you on the MMR thresholds that they should not be. And that's the issue that Blizzard actually put in Season 2 for some reason. Um, I do not know why they actually did that. Because they actually talked about uh, removing, like not in removing but increasing the inflation. So that people can climb much faster in the beginning of the season. But it feels like it is not really the case. It feels like currently we are reliving Season 2 but even in, uh, Season 1 but even in a worse state. Also participation wise you can see it on this website so you can go on just far stats dragonflights ladder stats you can also go to the soul shuffle stats you can even go to activity you can play around it you are going to be mind blown that in 3v3 eu the last seven days in the top thousand and top thousand is not like a lot there's only like 878 ranked players in eu i'm going to do top 5000 it is not going to augment because it is top thousand it's going to be this is the total players currently playing this seven last days it's abysmal top 5000 means that that's the whole pool of players in eu that plays 3v3 4,133 ranked players. That's mind-boggling. And it's really unfortunate because I think the gameplay is not that bad. I think it has nothing to do with gameplay. It has only to do with, I would say, marketing. It has to do with communication. It has to do with, of course, healers not being like very inclined to go heal or players not really inclined to play healer i already made a video about it even i am not inclined to do pl to play healer and there is no gold incentive that can actually put me into a healer position but that's another discussion this is 
really low. Even previous season, season one, at the end of season one, where everything was already like played out, so there was no nothing to play for, except maybe the people are actually pushing for glad. The activity was much higher. It is really abysmal. Last seven days, it means last reset. It means we are now Friday. So it means from Friday to Friday, which is normally something that should be, again, representative of the amount of people actually playing currently in the game. It's not like last day or last 48 hours because that would be even worse. It is the last seven days. And I want to see 2v2 because I, I didn't see 2v2. I only saw 3v3v3. The representation in 2v2, I am really, really looking forward to see it. Let me see the 2v2 bracket. It's even lower. It's 4,077, 4,081 ranked players. You do understand that 2v2 normally is one of the most popular brackets, the most played brackets in PvP normally. If you go on Wrath of the Lich King, you will find more players in 2v2 than in 3v3. Even in previous seasons, even in previous expansions, 2v2 was the bracket that people played because you don't really need a healer. There's a lot of classes that can play double DPS. There's a lot of classes that actually like to... like. There's also a lot of people that do like to heal like 2v2 because it's less stressful. That's it. Like for, for me, 2v2 is more fun because I can actually participate doing damage as a wrestler druid, for example. I can go cut form, do my bleeds, and go out. So th that's still a possibility. But we have less players in 2v2. In EU, of course, in a US, I don't know. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna check. Again, it's not joined. So US and EU do not play together. They have a bit more players in US. So the game is more popular in US than in EU. So again, US have normally less players than EU in general. If you go on, like, uh, I would say, how oh, it's called? Um, if you go on League of Legends or Valorant or CSGO, whatever online game there is, US, at least the US servers never have many more players than EU because EU pool is sh should be higher because you have the Russian sometimes, you have, uh, not, not sometimes, it's always, by the way, um, you have the Russians, you have the Dutch, the Dutch, you have the Germans, you have the French, you have the Belgian, me, for example, uh, like Spanish, you have many players in EU, while in US, you, they're limited with maybe Canada, I would say US, and I'd say maybe some Mexicans here and there, and then you have like these, uh, like South Americans, I don't know if they are playing on US servers or if they have own servers, but still little man it's 4200 players so there is something wrong and like i said it's basically communication it's basically their marketing being drastically bad again if you do remember the tweet the tweet that they actually made like the pvp poll thing i mean guys i know that it was a joke i i was kind of laughing because i saw myself like Look, I know PvP is not their focus. They're laughing at me. I'm laughing too, because why am I playing that game? Because I do love that game. Why do I love that game? That's a whole discussion I give to myself. But it's kind of telling how frustrating it is to actually play that game. Because we are not considered as a uh, whole part of the game. There is no PTR testing for PvP. There is no pure blue post about the state of PvP. There is always a blue post about Mythic Plus or raiding before the season starts because they do want it to be correct and good. But somehow PvP, they prefer it to just leave it to the players and they do what they want. And it's a sandbox, really. We do not know... We can kind of predict because we do predict um, like metas and such. But... There is no testing, so everything is like a surprise. And sometimes the surprise is very good, and sometimes the surprise is very bad. And currently, we have less players than season one, like end of season, season one. So it's looking quite dire because of that situation. The thing that is quite odd is in RBGs, you have more players now. But 
you do realize since it's 10 v 10 you need to divide it by 10 and those are the amount of teams that they are actually running every single week and some players have alts and some players use rpgs to actually cap for example but it's also surprising that we have more players in rpg right now so what is going on is everyone going into solo shuffle it might be it might be that we have everyone in solo shuffle that's why i'm going to go to the leaderboards and go to solo shuffle and those are the games but you can also just see the amount of players in 1800 and plus we have in eu 8665 players above 1800 which is quite good and eu us the same you have pretty much also 8206 8, players the activity of social is quite nice still i guess that's the only saving grace that we have but it's still less than previous season this the soul, the shuffle rounds in previous season was up to 100k in the last 24 hours that was season one right now we are at 30,000 shuffle rounds in the last 24 hours it's really not that good you do, you do realize that this is the whole us if you go for eu the same you you have around 31 shuffle rounds and 5200 lobbies played so i'm very very scared about how they are actually dealing with things because again they are not really looking into um communicate about like so shuffle hopefully tonight maybe we are friday there is always something going on on friday hopefully some ptr testing not ptr but some uh, blue post about like changes that they want to make but it's kind of telling that they are always like shoving it to the next patch 10.1.5 is going to be the patch where soul shuffle will be better that's what they said but they said that for 10.1 as well so now we need to see what is going to be better what is going to change to get it better and on the ptr testing what do they get they get like something like extra i think which is like an extra box or something it's it's really little, too little for healers to actually be incentivized. And to be honest, there's no real incentives, incentives, incentives that actually can be brought to the healers to actually come PvP. Um, I think there is multiple things that can help the participation to go higher, but that would be drastic, at least on the amount of changes that should be made. And I do not know if Blizzard actually wants to make so many changes. And right now it feels that like everything is slowed down because of the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft merger. I feel like communication is way off. I feel like they also missed the point with a lot of things. Like for example, the token, I think it's the worst ever uh, timing that they actually choose for uh, to, to, to put the token out. I think right now we are in a state where everyone is wor waiting for Hardcore Classic and they put it out like nobody will actually like talk about it. and then everyone got like super negative comments about it i get, got my comments as well on the video uh, i do think that token uh, doesn't help but i do also think that there is many things that can't really help for rmt except banning the players that actually buy golds but that's a whole other video again I, I posted it so if you want to check that out you can also check that out um but personally uh, I'm very scared about Dragonflight. I do want to reiterate, I think it is the best PvP expansion. I think gameplay-wise, it is also a lot better than Shadowlands. It's also a lot better than BFA and it's a lot better than Legion, in my opinion. Because Legion had templates. If Legion hadn't, like, templates and just normal gearing, I think Legion would be the best. At least compared to what we have right now. But dragonflight the issue is a lot of player players are leaving the game and there is always a reason why people leave the game it's not because the game is boring it's not because th there is something wrong with like the systems because that's not the case people left shadowlands because of those things because the gameplay was not that really like cool because of double outlaw if you do remember for example season three or a Torgas in season one and season two being like very very chory although season two it was like an improvement but season one was really a chore but season one shadowlands had a lot more participation in general i think if you have put soul shuffle in season one shadowlands 
the, it would crush the numbers that we actually have in Dragonflight. I think the issue is right now we need to have some kind of like decisions com coming for P uh, PvP and we need communication about that and for now we do not get that so we will have to wait for awc probably to to get any information about what they want to do with pvp uh it will like again be a bit long to actually wait about it but we'll see there's diablo 4 coming out in like one week and a half and that's a problem because once Diablo 4 is going to come out once other games are actually catching up or anything is catching up you will see the numbers from Dragonflight actually bleed. And I think right now we are bleeding. And I do love Dragonflight. And I said that I would like to take a break for making videos about Dragonflight because of the solo shuffle queues. And I did not really enjoy uh, waiting in those queues. And I enjoyed my time. But I, like I said in a post, like my latest post, I think it was a too, oh, too big of an emotional reaction for me. Uh, I feel like I kind of let down a lot of people because of that. I also had a lot of conversation about it with a lot of people. And in my opinion, I think I should keep Dragonflight content still uh, relevant on my channel. So you will still see PvP, guys. You will still see gameplay somehow, some way. So if it's a BG or a social fall or world PvP, it will be gameplay. I will maybe make more casual guys about specs that... I'm not really a, a, a great player on, but I can really explain what is the, the goal of, of that set spec, for example. And I will try to keep like tier lists, relevant videos, discussion videos, state of PvP, AWC. I will try to cover all of things, all, 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 all of the, these things, but I also will cover like, again, extra things. For example, Diablo 4, I will make Diablo 4 PvP content with build videos, gameplay videos, everything. I will make everything about Diablo 4 PvP because I think there is a niche to be filled and I think there is, uh, for me, growth to be seek, uh, seek, uh, found, I would say. And also, I think there's also a lot of crossover with Blizzard games. Like, for example, World of Warcraft. A lot of people that are playing World of Warcraft actually play Diablo 4 as well. So I feel like... If there is like a potential of crossover that I can have with both players and bring player players from Dragon Ball 4 to World of Warcraft and vice versa, I think it's a huge win. What I will also do is, again, I will not destroy the purpose of the channel, which was actually about World of Warcraft PvP. I will still post videos about World of Warcraft, Classic, Retail, uh, even Ascension, uh anything hardcore classic once the servers are out because i'm kind of waiting for it right now it's like pointless to to level something while i'm not really a fast leveler i will do that but i will also like add other things like for example other mmos that are coming out uh, which i think uh, would be like a good addition to the pvp scene for example or something where i see potential in where there is growth to be had but i will not destroy the whole uh videos about dragonflight so i will make still videos every week about uh, about dragonflight but i will probably uh share it with a bit of um uh time i would say so video uh, video credits so I, I will talk about credits like for example if i have like seven videos every week there might be like four videos of dragonflight or three videos of dragonflight i will have like four or three videos about everything else like for example diablo 4 or for example ascension or for example classic or classic hc for example so i will do something like that with the channel um i also said the reason why i will do that is because i'm like actually very afraid of dragonflight um any creator is actually afraid of i think even streamers right now uh, are kind of afraid of and a lot of people are actually branching out of like the dragonflight scene because again the, the the game even though you would say that the game is probably the one one of the best um i would say gameplay iterations of world of warcraft it is simply not enough because we do lose players and we do lose players at a rapid like um speed so it, it will be it will be very very annoying to be making only dragonflight uh content and then have like kind of the, the, the uh, like i would say no fail safe or no uh landing on the feats i would say 
whenever Dragonflight is over, for example, whenever like World of Warcraft it is, it is an in a inevitable dip, which is going to happen. I think the, the content um, succession that we get for like Dragonflight is very fast. So that's a very good thing. But I do think also they dropped the ball on the communication for PvP. I think PvE, I think it's quite good what they're doing. I think people that are actually ask, asking for Soul Shuffle Mythic Plus, they do not know what they want. So uh, I would not ask for su such a thing because you will probably regret it. Um, you you will queue up, but you will have longer queues than just looking for the LFG. That's what I'm saying. Um, so I'm uh, actually like looking forward to the future of the channel right i'm trying to uh build my current viewer base with like dragonflight but i also want to have like a, a future viewer base on a other game for example or another genre of game um right now i do love world of warcraft i am passionate about i'm very saddened of the actual state of world of warcraft actually retail uh, because uh, I see it with my own eyes, I see it with stats, I see, I feel it also that it is in a worse state, I would say, with players and population than Shadowlands, where debatable, you can also do not like Shadowlands, for example, and Dragonflight is debatable, like, again, but it is the best expansion for PvP since ages. Um, I would say Mist of Pandaria is very close, but even then, I would say the Dragonflight is probably better. It's so weird to me that we lose players, because there is no incentive to actually have those players into, inside a game. And I know that gearing is easy, I know that people do love the gearing, and do love that the easiness of having like two hours to grind honor and you will get your gear. It's very good, I also love that, because I have like so many classes to level, so... It's, it gives me time to actually have a lot of gear on a lot of tunes. But I do also see that players are leaving because there is no incentive for the, for them to leave, uh, to play. And I know that some people do not understand why I'm saying, like, look, um, I prefer players to be kind of obliged to play the game. But that's a bit the case, right? People are just not obliged to play because they had everything handed to them and... They can be gone while in pve they have to work very hard to get gear which is unfortunate for them but it's a progress it's an rpg so that's also the reason why you're playing the game and i feel like if pve actually had to grind a bit of pvp that would like add the numbers and the whole cycle of the pvp scene would be better or better off and that's the thing about uh, current World of Warcraft. I feel like there is many things going on. And what I would like to see is some communication from Blizzard. Uh, one way or another. They could, they could also just say, look, we looked for a solution for social fall. Unfortunately, there is no solution. They could also just drop the, like, throw the to towel, right? You could just say, look, uh, we tried everything. We could try everything, but it will bring blots because, again, if gold, gold was a possibility to gain, you will see a lot more healers that are bots, but really bots, and they will face each other. So, obviously, one bot will win and one bot will lose, and they will get the gold and they will then sell it to players or whatever they can do with that gold, right? So... I feel like goals is really not the only option that you can have because it it will just bring bots into PvP. That's what I think, really think. If if it's a viable way to actually farm gold, um, that viable way we be, will become bot bot land. So uh, I would like to to see something else. But they would they would say, look, we tried everything about social fall and really it's only just healers are not that popular in our, on our games and it, it just is what it is so you have to deal with it or roll a healer if you want to have faster queues they could just say that and it's already plentiful to know uh what where we are going but right now we do not know where we're going we don't even know if they have a solution or not and we do not even know what is going to be the future of the warcraft so that's the issue i have uh so right now i'm struggling with that but i'm trying to work it on and uh out and i try to um yeah to look for uh future content that can be done on my channel 
Uh, I will keep on doing like World of Warcraft retail because again, that's something I'm very passionate about. So again, I'm I'm going to work on it. But I will try to also listen to my to the feedback that I do get uh, from my viewers and from my subscribers and from uh, my uh, donors and members. And I will try to uh, again grow the community, grow World of Warcraft, however I can, make it happen, make it help. Uh, like I would say, the PvP scene, and uh, look also forward a bit forward with other games, for example, Diablo for PvP or other games that can actually come out and maybe overtake World of Warcraft, which is still a possibility. Anyways. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. We will catch each other very soon in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.